Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask? So I'll tell you, the exception mean of Angel is messenger and the exception mean of Destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And of course, I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Miel Fox. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching the show live for a later date as it means a lot to both of us to connect with like-minded people. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray, and I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy. And I'm a guide who helps you remember your divine presence so that you can heal your past, find your purpose, create your future, to expand your consciousness, understand your spiritual path, get clarity on the next steps to take, and take charge of your destiny so that you can fill your purpose in this lifetime. Now, each episode of this show covers various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or angel oracle card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Miel Fox, about self-worth through divine love, where we're going to explore how our unique love and energetic languages connect us with source, guiding us to self-love and divine joy, and how to learn to integrate messages from the heart, human and divine, to rediscover your soul's essence through awareness, accountability, and forgiveness. Now, Miel is the multifaceted faceted expression of her soul. Her mission statement in this lifetime is to share awareness and channel love to shift the collective one heart at a time. She has always shown up in capacity of service, initially in a health career for over 30 years, and now offers additional support through aligned wellness, mentoring, as an energetics awareness navigator, a certified EFT practitioner, and an advanced numerologist. Miel has created a podcast called Energy of the Untamed Heart, where she explores what hinders us as humans from really hearing the whispers of our wild heart, as well as how we can use the language of love and energy to walk our way home to who we are on the deepest essence. Now, she's an avid equestrarian and shares her love of horses to help teach the interconnectedness of heart resonance to others. Now with testimonials such as, Miel is an amazingly warm and wise individual. She has an intuitive sense of your problem and can hone in on practical and easy solutions to help you get unstuck. She has the unusual ability to make the hard seem easy so you can get on with what you need to do. Work with Miel, you won't regret it. And working with Miel has been literally life-changing for me. I am now understanding how to move past stories I've got going in the, to the place of true healing. This is what the experience has brought to the table. So without further delay, hello, Miel, and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? I'm doing just great. Thank you so much for having me. Ah, you're welcome. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that not only can you share this video, but you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts, as both Miel and I want to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy. So Miel, why don't you tell us more about your journey and how we can find self-worth through divine love, self-love? Absolutely, I'd be happy to. And feel free to stop me if questions come up or uh, later folks can take a look in and send in their questions. So hi, everybody. Nice to see you all. My name is Miel Fox, and I'm on the other side of the pond here from our lovely Ray. Um, my journey is a little bit like the Beatles song, The Long Twisted Winding Road. And I think many of us have that. And that it, it's the beauty and the challenge at the same time. And while you're in it, sometimes we see the twists as, oh my goodness, like, could we just get to someplace normal and peaceful and all the things that we think is just so, so nirvana, but it's through the twists and the turns and the changes and the difficulties and living on the edge and pushing past that comfort zone is where you really start to to dig deep and find out who who are you the way you showed up when you first showed up versus who do you think you are 50 years later with all the bricks and the piles of stories and beliefs and patterns and silliness that we've put on ourselves either we've done it or by our exposure in our environment so um let me just say a disclaimer here this is a hundred percent my opinion it does not mean it's what what it has to be i just like to share how I sort of see things and how I've found uh, my way through my challenges, through my 
journey, through my history, through my story. Uh, so that's kind of what I'd like to just share a little bit with you yeah. and tap in a little bit into uh, the science and the spiritual part. So just sort of give a, a really easy um, connection between some of our physical pieces and some of our spiritual pieces of why it's important because the awareness of the two components together is what helps us walk back home to our heart. So that's really kind of where I, where I'm coming from. So yeah, no, I, like, I like that. Tea. Spiritually, yeah. Yeah. Some spirituality, yeah. science, practicality. Perfect for me. Beautiful. So it's like a little mishmash of everything. So, you know, grab your tea, your coffee, your beer, whatever you like to have and, and sit down and make a little bowl of popcorn. Cause I'm going to tell you a little story. So my parents come from Europe and they emigrated to the United States quite a long time ago. They're no longer with us. Um, but that being said, when they came to the United States, they brought with them quite a bit of their own issues and trauma and drama and wounds and all the things because it was shortly after a war. So we have all the things that occur with a war and then you have all the personal things that happen just to everybody. Because here's the truth. We are a soul having a human experience. And so our soul has come here to be in earth school, to have a little taste of everything, the good, the bad, the ugly, all of it, because we need the opposition or the duality or the polarity or the dichotomy, whatever phrase you want to put to it in order to have a frame of reference. And in Sometimes it doesn't make sense or you think, well, well, why do I have to suffer in order to understand joy? Well, it's not you have to suffer to understand joy. It's that if we live in one way only, let's say you live in, you're totally high vibe all the time and you have no idea that there's any other way, then you don't have any frame of reference whatsoever from which to grow. So you actually need the opposing in order to make the changes, the transformation, the, the transmutation of your human being to get back to what your real soul purpose is. And so that is why our soul has this little journey here on earth for us to have all the things, to experience all the things. Where things get a little bit mucky is our soul shows up in theory, nice and clean and pure and untainted, if you want to call it that. And then as a human, we have human experiences. We're raised in a certain family arrangement, environment arrangement, maybe school educational arrangement, work arrangement, other relationships that you will have throughout your human lifetime. And this starts to add little stories, beliefs, patterns, honestly, untruths, to what's really going on. And because we are a human mind wrapped with a soul essence in our being, sometimes there's a little dissonance between the two. And as a result, we, our human tends to get stuck, get stuck up there. Like, oh, am I good enough? Am I this enough? Am I that enough? Do people like me? Am I going to be okay? Am I rejected? Am I safe? Am I, am, am I list could just, I mean, it's replete, right? It could go forever. So many of us spend quite a bit of our lives unraveling, peeling the blankets off, so to speak, until we find our way to walk home to our heart. Part of, for me, what I believe is a piece of that journey is understanding that we're all energy and understanding that we are an exchange of energy with everything around us, people, the earth, Everything, 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 everything being energy. And if you want to get to the science geeky, it's all about quantum science and quantum physics and how do energy particles move and and exist, which is for anyone who really wants to go down the geeky road, it's a waveform versus a particle form, which is why there's infinite possibility. So without getting too crazy down the road of physics, the gist is if you understand that we're predominantly energy, then just by connecting the dots, you understand that your body, your human body is also energy and the components of your body, your cells, your organs, your emotions, your thoughts, your feelings, all of it, it's all energy. So if we can hear the messages that we need to hear from all this other energetic information that is above and beyond our human body, and you can apply whatever terminology you like for that, whether you choose to call it universe or spirit or Gaia or God or Buddha or 
whatever term you want, it's not the word. I'm just going to say it's not the word. It's the essence of what does the word represent. It's that there is something bigger than our little 3D existence here on earth. And we are speaking the language of energy. That's it. It's really that simple. We speak the language of energy. So my personal vision is that we are all divine sparks of love. All of us. It's not like one person gets to be more lovey-dovey than another. We're all the same. <laughs> we're all here to experience our version of Earth School. And ultimately, when we're done here on Earth School, we're going back from whence we came as a divine spark of love. And the difficulty is it kind of gets a little muddy in between. So when we talk about walking home to your heart, it's because we've lost our way a little bit. It's not that we're broken. It's not that we're not complete. It's not that we're any of the things. It's just we've allowed our mind to kind of clutter things up a little bit so that it makes it a little harder to see the light that sparks in your being. And some of what I do is serve kind of as somebody's lighthouse. Like, let me shine the light till you can shine your own light. It's really kind of that easy. So there's a lot of ways to share the language of energy, or I call it, everybody has their unique language of love, however that speaks to you. Uh, for me, I really love numbers. I'm really sciencey. I'm really geeky. I love patterns. I really love numbers. And so for me, it's, it's very natural to use the language of numbers, which is pretty much the energy or the science of transformation to help people understand their uniqueness, their, their specifically coded beauty of who their soul has come to be in this lifetime and their gifts that are specifically coded to them, you can actually uh, find this information within their numerology, within their coded birth information. Here's the next disclaimer, everybody. At the end of the day, free will trumps the whole shebang. So the numerology is a little bit like forecasting, like, oh, 80% chance of rain, better get your umbrella, that kind of thing. It's not a psychic event, uh, but it certainly shines some light on what your, any one individual's energetic influences may be, as well as their soul path journey through this lifetime. That being said, there is nothing that is rigid because at the end of the day, your human free will and choice will create a different expression or experience of how you move through this, this world in your lifetime. So that's what the numerology piece of it is. Um, the EFT or emotional freedom technique portion of it is really to help us create a space within ourselves that allows us to receive and hear the messages that are trying to come through for us. As a human, we spend a lot of our time back and forth constantly, a hundred bajillion times a day between different parts of our human nervous system. Some are there to keep us alive and well, some are there to run the show in the background. Because of our human way of living here, many of us spend an awful lot of time in the very busy save your life side, which is what we refer to as fight flight. And part of the components that go to that is your body thinks that you need to be saved. So it pumps out an awful lot of biochemicals that you don't necessarily want on board in the moment. And if those are allowed to continue to just go, 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 then they overload. Think of like you're putting too many dishes in your sink until it overflows. Sooner or later, you're going to have a big old mess. Got to clean the sink. Got to get the dishes out of there. So part of EFT is a combination of working through verbally uh, things that are thought processes or emotions or, or feelings that are going on, along with physical tapping of known energetic meridians, physical points on the body, so that the combination of those two things allows a more rapid transition from that fight flight, very anxious life-saving side of your nervous system into what's referred to as your rest or repose, calm or harmonic side of your nervous system. Truth be told, you cannot make a logical, clear, heartfelt decision when you're all jacked up thinking the tiger's about to eat you. Doesn't happen. 
You can only, you can only grow at the rate at which you're calm in a nutshell. So the EFT helps to just sort of get you back on track, grounded, calmer in your heart space versus your head space. It's a little bit more, uh, it, it's like you want to be set up to do the task. And so when you're in the right or not right in the more correct or more harmonic side of your being, you're in a better place to make those decisions. So this sounds all very Reader's Digest, easy peasy. Oh, just like that. Um, and, and it can be, I mean, it could be really, but having, having now gone through quite a long circuitous journey to get to where I am, it, it might sound super simple, but I'm going to tell you flat out, it wasn't easy. It was not easy. And it's not easy because your mind, your, your ego mind up here, that part of your human is designed to keep you alive. Yeah. And so that part of your human is like, I will tell you anything I have to tell you to keep myself and you alive. Even if it's not the truth, I'm going to say it anyway. So I'm going to talk trash to you. I'm going to tell you you're no good. I'm going to tell you you're not enough. I'm going to tell you all the things because I need to stay alive. When the reality is who's really running the show? Your heart space. The essence of where your soul is. And again, another little sciencey geeky fact. Your heart space has five, well over 5,000 more mm, that the expansion or the, the electromagnetic field here is that much bigger than here. So if you think about it, when people say, think from your heart, decide from your heart, make choices from your heart, there's a reason for that. Because your heart space, and I'm not talking like, you know, your little heart organ. Yeah. I'm talking about this energetic realm within your being. <laughs> Although this is pretty too. Uh, <laughs> that is like your direct connection to upstairs. Upstairs being up here, not here. Like everything that is beyond us. Your heart space is your direct connector to your higher self, your intuition, how the universe chooses to, to relay information back and forth to you with the assistance of guides and spirit guides and all, all the things. And if we can quiet our mind and get into our heart space, it opens the door for receivership, which is what I call picking the phone up. Yep, got you. I can hear you loud and clear now. Here we go. That receivership is what brings the beauty of all the abundance that people seek in this world. Whether your abundance is, I just want peace in my heart. I want to have X, Y, Z in my life. What, whatever your thing is, when you're able to be open and receive and let go of what does it mean? What does it represent? What's it attached to? That open door to receivership is the pathway to the expansion. So we did title this talk about self-worth through divine self-love. Okay, so let me let me come back around. So the comeback around is, if you think about this, if you define the value of who you are, and how you move through the world, only by what is external to you. What does my Aunt Betty think? What do my friends think? What does my job represent? Do I have to have a degree from college? What if I don't have any money? What if I have a little house versus a big house? You know, what if I'm not skinny enough, this enough, that enough? All, all the things we tell ourselves. What if I don't, you know, prepare the perfect meal and I'm not Martha Stewart? Like, whatever. Whatever that thing is where we give away what is our own divine sovereignty of being by putting the weight or the, the significance of what does it mean by what does someone think of us. When that occurs, the value, our true value, who we are, which is our soul, is, eh, I'm going to call the word diminished a little bit because you're giving it away. You're not, you're not holding it here. And it, it, my, my real nutshell answer to that is when you give outside of yourself constantly, and that's how you define yourself, you've abandoned yourself to me. That's my opinion. So 
you know, let's not throw the baby out of the bathwater here. If you don't want to be abandoning yourself, the steps are starting to understand your worth, your value, your uniqueness, your divine spark of love that is you. So when people say, what am I here for? Uh, you're here to be you. You're here to be the source of love that you are at your deepest place within your being. And this little package on the outside is just having a little bit of, you know, experiences down the road, going on a treasure hunt for your lifetime here, doing all the things. And that's kind of how I see that. But it took me a long time to get through and figure it out. Yeah. 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 So, so what were some of the things you had to go through to actually, to actually figure this out? So I was raised, um, I was raised in America with very European standards. So my parents both came from a different country. So I was raised in the United States, not as a typical U.S. kid. I was raised as a U.S. kid with other country um, yeah. expectations, societal, cultural expectations. Translation created an awful lot of clash, a lot of dissonance, a lot of difficulty just trying to get through as a kid. My parents had very, very strict expectations and, and lessons that were passed forward. And, and I, you know, totally no blame, no anything. I was a really bitter child, I will say that. But as an adult, I have gone through the forgiveness piece of this because you don't know what you don't know until you do. So yes. we were raised uh, with a lot of things. We were raised with, in order for you to be wanted, loved, and successful, you had to achieve let me say that differently. In, in order to receive love, you had to achieve, you had to be successful, you had to have good grades, you had to not be disrespectful in public, you had to, you know, do the checklist, all the things. And if you didn't, then that emotional piece was withheld. And it's not that that was said verbally, like in a contract, but that was the story. That was either the story that was put out there or it was the story that I internalized and believed. I'm not receiving this because of that, but the pattern was absolutely in place. And as I said at the beginning of the podcast, both of my parents came to this country with a lot of their own personal and generational still traumatic wounding secondary to war, secondary to their personal upbringing, and it gets brought forward to the next generation. I don't think with any ill intent. I don't think they birthed their children and, and said, here, let's, let's really screw them up. I don't think that goes on. But I think not knowing, it, you know, it sounds so simple now here in, in 2020, what are we in for? Cool. You know, we have these tools. We have social media. We have a toolbox. We have a way to better ourselves. It's not considered unacceptable to talk about your problems publicly, but in my parents' generation, sweep it under the rug. It happens behind a closed door. You don't talk about it. You say nothing and, you know, you hide it in a bottle, basically. So both my parents were alcoholics and which is neither here nor there. I mean, everybody deals with their own thing in their own way, but they certainly weren't in a position to understand that they're personal issues and problems were being covered up or denied or, or or not dealt with through some other modality, be it alcohol or smoking or whatever the thing was. And then you layer that with, we have high expectations for the kids, like they need to do X, Y, Z. Uh, so that parlayed as a teenager into a lot of difficulties with mm -hmm. how did I fit in? How was I going to be accepted? I had a weird name. I had weird parents. I came from a weird family. I spoke a weird language. Like, you name it, I was that kid. And my generation was, as a woman, don't let them know how smart you are. Don't let them know how strong you are. Don't let them know, pick your thing, whatever that is. It was pretty much, mm -mm, zip it and be quiet and be quiet and be a, be quiet in the background. Um, you know, you hear things like <laughs> my mother, we used to say constantly when we were kids, don't speak unless spoken to. Yeah. Right. If I need to hear your opinion, I'll give it to you. Oh, hmm. isn't that interesting? What does that really say to a child? Mm -hmm. Don't use your voice. 
We don't need to see or hear you unless we want to. Thank you so much. And we don't really want to know what you have to think or say. So we're just going to like feed it to you, which doesn't sound overly harmful, you know, when you're a little kid, but now bring that forward yeah. into your adulthood. And now your belief of who am I? What am I? How do I gain acceptance in the world starts to get a little twisted, a little distorted. So for me, it was my way to my personal freedom was going to happen through changing my career, was going to happen through what I call getting out from under, was going to happen through whatever. I made a lot of, uh, shall we say, less than ideal choices over the decades, a lot of less than ideal choices, miracle I'm alive, but let's just say I learned from each of them. Yes. I learned a lot from each of them. And I'm now finally at a place, and, and I'll tell you the big aha, I'll give that because I know everybody's like, well, what was the big aha? I, I won't leave you hanging. You're probably halfway through your popcorn by now. But what I will say is you get the messages until you get the message. God bless the universe. They will keep on giving you the message in whatever way you need it until you finally go, got you. Oh, thank you so much. I get it now. So that usually occurs either as like some kind of major trauma, physical illness, mental unwellness. Um, you get to a place in your life where you're like, oh my God, is this it? Are you kidding me? Like this is God, there's gotta be another way, right? Like there's gotta be, because if this is it, I'm thinking this is a huge design flaw right here. Like this can't be it. It just can't be. So for me, my aha, my real aha, I had little ahas along the way, mm. like little ones. And I'd do a little work and I'd do a little work and I'd do a little work, but I never really made like, let's go. Let's really dig in. My real big dig in probably occurred four or five years ago. My brother took ill very quickly and died very acutely within a handful of days. It was, it was awful. It was really awful. And he, I mean, he's in a far better situation now that he's not here on earth, which I know sounds a little weird. I loved him dearly, but his life on earth was so mm. awful for him that his ability to be free of his humanness and return to the amazingness of who the soul is for him, yes. night and day, so night and day. And for anybody who wants to know, he's always there. Like he's always like he's here now. He's always around me. Always. Um, it's that was my like, oh, you only get this one ride on the merry ground. So what the hell are you going to do with this? Are you going to really live it? Are you really going to live the moment and be what I like to call momentful? Or are you going to spend your time squirreling your head, wondering like, what do I have to do for people to like me? What do I have to do to find happiness? What do I have to do? Okay, you don't have to do diddly poop other than let go, let go, trust, have some faith, and understand you don't need to be defined by everything else around you because you got everything you need right here. That's how you showed up. That's all there is to it. So, yeah. Yeah. And it's it's too bad, honestly, that you have to either experience a death or a loss or a something before you finally, oh, okay. But sometimes that's what it takes. Like sometimes you just don't hear it. So for me, why am I so passionate about getting on like your show creating my show. I mean, all the things I am so passionate about saying to people, hello, you got one ride. What do you want to do with this? Everybody is divinely coded to experience love and joy in this lifetime. It's up to each of us to either grab a hold and go, enjoy the ride, or be miserable. It's really that yeah yeah straight straight <laughs> straight forward it's it's one of one of those and unfortunately it's a lot of outside influences isn't it that really sort of yeah. like stops us from being in that joy and love that keeps us in that oh, God, not another thing oh this or 
of, mm-hmm. of that um, rather than going within and um, you know connecting with with all that positivity we let the outside negativity come into us mm-hmm. and and at the end of the day when someone says well why do you think that is and my answer is fear and safety and the the short answer is fear fear of rejection fear of not being loved fear of not being enough fear 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 fear, fear. fill it you go ahead and fill it in whatever the fear is Behind fear is the ultimate, most basic core desire of a human, which is safety. So if you think about it, why is our body set up with these? There's actually more than two, but we'll just call it two. Why is our body set up with two main nervous systems whose jobs are save your ass, excuse my swearing, or recharge so that you're ready for save your ass. Okay. Why do we have these two systems in our being? Because it provides safety, right? If the tiger is chasing you, that, that better get going side is going to kick in to save you. If the tiger is taking a nap and all is good, your body's going to throw all this information and energy out there to get yourself prepared and ready so that you can live your most available life while you're here as a human. So at the end of the day, what's at the basis, base, the basis, the most basic you know, piece that we as humans, like our soul doesn't need the safety, our soul's safe because it comes here completely yeah. intact and pure and perfect in the way it is. It's our human. So what makes our human feel really safe? If we can answer that question, you get to the base of what is creating every single fear that we express. I have a fear of not being loved. I have a fear I'm not enough. I have a fear I'll be rejected. I have a fear I'll be judged. I have a fear I won't, whatever, pick your, fill in the blank, whatever the thing is. And if you pare that down, keep going. What's at the bottom of it? Safety. So dare I say, it starts early. Mm -hmm. You know, some of it is, early on, not really in your control because you're a kid, you're a baby. I mean, it is what it is. I'm going to say to anybody watching and listening, uh, give yourself some grace because there isn't a single human that comes through this journey in earth school without a dang, a dent and, and some form of wounding baggage. I don't care what you want to call it. That's part of the package. It's what you're here for. The question becomes, do you want to just set the baggage on the curb and have a good time and enjoy the moments? Or do you want to carry so much baggage with you that you can hardly take a step one foot to the other? It's up to us. Totally up to us. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the, yeah. yeah. And again, I think that's a, a thing that, you know, a, a reoccurring thing that people don't realize that it is up to us as individuals to make those choices because again because of societal things that we have to rely on others to make those choices for us rather than us going actually I can make this choice yeah so I do want to say I'm not suggesting that you become a hermit. I'm not suggesting you become a monk. I'm not suggesting that you ignore that you live in a society with other people and interactions and relationships and connections because we're here for the connection. We're here to create relationship. But there's a difference between creating a codependent relationship where you define yourself by everything else, as opposed to a healthy relationship with healthy boundaries, a good, solid, grounded understanding of who are you or who is each one of us within the relationship. And when you're solid within yourself, then you don't have the fear of asking for help, the fear of reaching out, the fear of connecting, the fear of the rejection, all those things. So it is, it, it's an ongoing journey because truthfully, if you get to the end of the journey, you're leaving earth anyway. So you might yeah. as well just enjoy the ride while you're here. I mean, you might as well really. And yeah, there's hard days. Yeah. There's difficulties, but behind every disaster, if you want to call it that you're like a disaster, a disaster is just a big disaster. So yeah. behind every disaster, right. 
there's a little nugget of gold. There's a little yes. something that that you can you can take to help you. And it's all a matter of do you choose it? Do you choose to lean into that or do you choose to boohoo or to ignore or to turn away? It's it is a choice. It really is. Sometimes they're hard in the moment. Yeah, but it is. Yeah. yeah. No, no, be uh, be beautifully said. Yeah, it, it is if something um, uh, major sort of like comes along. I mean, I've had a fairly straightforward, um, you know, nothing major, and then a couple of years ago, you know, completely rug pulled out from under, 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 under my feet. You know, it's like, oh my, because because it had come out of the blue. You know, my life has been, per you know, practically perfect since up to up up to that point, but. It was once the self pity and everything had sort of like, and you cut a weekend. It was then looking at the higher perspective. Why has this happened? What have I not been listening to, to to do this? And then doing the healing and learning from that to actually move move through that, and then not have that guilt or um, that anger or you know to anyone and everything connected with it because that's just that. That's not who I choose to be. Um, right. And I sometimes think that a lot of people in today's society don't have that um, where they, I suppose I was lucky with that background that I had and um, they don't, they don't have that or that knowledge of information and they don't um, allow themselves to actually see it from that high perspective and they keep that blame and everything um, around on the situation, the people that are involved in it rather than letting it go. I mean, you don't have to forget, but you have to kind of like forgive and go, it happened. It takes time. Yeah. So what I will say is the first, to me, the first step to wanting, if one is desirable or desiring to make that shift, that change, that growth, then the first step in that is to me, awareness. It, it without awareness, you don't have the opportunity to then make some other optional decision, choice, direction, whatever. You have to have an awareness of the thing. Fortunately, today we have so much access to information, it's hard not to have an awareness. But the awareness can be as simple as how does this feel to me? Do I feel this in my body? Do I feel this in my heart? Do I feel this in my head? So what this really gets back to, to sort of bring us full circle here, yes, we are a soul in a human expression. So that being said, we talk about four planes of existence, as you well know. We talk about our physical plane being, here we are on Earth or school. We talk about our emotional plane, our feelings, our emotions. How does that work? And how is it connected to the next plane, which is your mental plane or your mind? What's going on upstairs? What, how are we taking these two pieces, the feeling and the thought, and how are they connecting to one another? And how is that being expressed through our body? And then the next level up is your spiritual level. What is my connection to something beyond myself here on earth? They are not truly... We talk about them separately as if they're independent of each other, but the reality is they are not. In order to have what I like to refer to as aligned wellness, it means that you kind of have to sort of be on board in all four planes. You have to have a fairly solid base or foundation in all four categories, physical, emotion, mental, and spiritual. If you're heavy in one and zero in the other, you're going to have a little bit of trouble. We are never 100% in all four, because if we were, we wouldn't be on earth. So it means it is an ongoing journey, an ongoing experiment, if you want to call it. I like to call my visit here on earth as a treasure hunt personally. That's me. I'm like, ooh, what's next? That'd be so cool. So that being said, it becomes important to understand, oh, I have physical emotional, mental, and spiritual components to my whole wellness. Where do I not quite feel aligned? Oh, I feel this tightness in my chest. What does that feel like? Oh, what made me feel like that? And when you start to kind of pick it apart a little bit, 
And then there's, you know, things people can do to help work through that. That's the awareness piece. Once the awareness is there and you start to slow down and really say, oh, okay, well, I wonder what's behind this and get curious. Now we can start to unravel some of these other layers. So that's kind of what the concept of aligned wellness refers to. It's like, let's, let's pull this apart a little bit, dig a little deeper and see where does this come from and how do we start to work through that so that you can set that suitcase off to the side and not have to carry it so much. That's the, the gist of it. So from the sciencey end, it's not when it's done here, pop a pill or here, go talk to the therapist for 20 minutes or here, you know, go jog five kilometers or whatever the thing is. It's this complete interwoven package of energies between our personal coded energies, our universal energies, and how do we choose and hear the language of love whatever that is for us, whether it's numbers or stars or dance or music or cooking or I don't know, whatever you do, what is your love language that allows you to walk home to your heart, the essence of who you are? Beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, you know, that that's so much to think and to, to, uh, to unpack. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's absolutely brilliant. Thank you. So as you know, I do guide meditations and I read angel oracle cards. And each week I like to ask my guests what they would like me to do for themselves and those watching. So Miel, do you want me to do a mini guide meditation? Would you like me to pull an oracle card for you and everyone? I would love a card if you would. Funny I enough, would love I that. Have them. I have them right in my hand. Surprise, surprise. I have them right at my fingertips. <laughs> exactly. Never go anywhere without without cards. I feel, I feel lost without them. Um, if, I, if, I don't, if I don't have a deck of cards with me. Now, of course, when I do the cards, I do the cards, what you need to know for your highest good at this moment in time. Because even though I work with the past, with the past life stuff, we go back to the past to learn to heal from it so it doesn't affect us in the present. And though I take people into the future, it's so we can learn, understand, know the steps. So we come back to the present. So we're not worrying about it. So what does Miel and everyone who's watching this need to know? Oh, okay, we'll go with that one then, because that one wanted to come out. And you're not gonna believe this. This just ties <laughs> in with the show I you I so am. well. <laughs> Stepping into power, you are strong beyond measure. Right? I mean, how perfect. And look at is the that? light. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so good. Yeah. Um, so good. It, it, it is. So, you know, so again, it's confirma it's confirmation for you, you know, that that you are strong beyond measure. You know, you have stepped into your power. You are stepping into your power. You are being that light that you are supposed to be for other people, which is absolutely amazing. And for those that are watching, you know, if you're not quite sure, just know that you are strong beyond measure and you can step into your power. You just have to take charge of that um, and know and trust that you are guided and you will get there when you take that power, when you take that power back. So, yeah, absolutely amazing. That card um, literally, literally uh, came out for you, Miel. And, flew out of the deck, um, right? I love I know. Oh, the card flew out of the deck. I'm like, and there it is. <laughs> exactly. You know, they, they always tell us what, 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 we, yeah. what we need to know. So, Miel, do you have any insights or thoughts or last words of wisdom to leave our viewers? Oh, gosh. Again, I don't know that it's so much wisdom as it's what have I learned from what have I done? And I guess the thing that I would say is that, the, can I say two? Am I allowed to say two? Yeah, certainly. Okay, okay. I'll, give, I'll yeah. give you two. So yeah. one is I've learned to be quicker to forgive than to find fault. I used to find fault quickly and forgive slowly. And now it's the other way around because I've learned not to have an attachment. So forgive quicker than you find fault. But probably even bigger than that, I'm gonna say, you've got to get right within if you wanna get right outside yourself. Yeah. Perfect, absolutely. Um, yeah, beautiful, beautiful wisdom um, that people can actually take with them. So thank you. 
very very much for that so i hope everyone that you've enjoyed this conversation found it insightful because i know i definitely have and i'm definitely going to have to go back and listen to it again so if people want to connect with you Miel, how do they do that mm -hmm. And do you have anything sure coming up at the moment? And have you been featured in a book at all? I just love that you ask these questions. Okay, so we'll we'll make it one, two, three, really easy for everybody. So I'm about everywhere. So easy peasy. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, all at Miel Fox. I also have a website called www.foxden energetics.com, which is sort of where there's a summary of the support services that I offer that are available for people who'd like to tap in. The podcast is called Energy of the Untamed Heart, available on all the major platforms, audio only, so you won't see this. Um, and what's up? I just completed my first co-authored event in a book with 11 other gals. Uh, it is called Activating the Divine Human, and it is a series of narratives from women who have really found their way home through their story, through their journey, through understanding how not to abandon themselves and how to take that power back to live their best life. So I have a chapter in that book called If You Want to See the Change, Be the Change. <laughs> Catchy. And it's, it's just a beautiful book. It really is. So it's called Activating the Divine Human, available on all the Amazon platforms. Um, I would encourage anyone who would really like to hear how other people, because we all come from different, different backgrounds, uh, but we're all with a common theme of returning home, returning to oneness, really finding our way back. And the beauty of the book is you can open to any page and you are going to receive what you need to hear or read. It, it's that good. It is that good. So yeah. And I'm going to That's agree what I'm up to you right now. <laughs> and I'm going to agree with that because I happen to have the book. So um, I, you know, so I, I can definitely um, say that. Yep. Yeah, um, whatever story you go to, it is amazing. <laughs> and there's so much insight and wisdom in the whole, whole book from all the, um, from from all the women that have actually uh, contributed it is is absolutely a brilliant book. And what I will do is I'll put all links to connect with Miel in the comments as well as the link sure. to actually get the book um, as well. So I'll do that after after the show. So thank you so much, Miel, for sharing your wisdom. It's been an absolute pleasure. I've enjoyed having you. Thank on. you. Um, and you are such a brilliant storyteller. I love it. <laughs> and hopefully, thank you. Hopefully, thank hopefully, you. You're hopefully, so hopefully, kind. Hopefully everyone's finished their popcorn by now. <laughs> oh, I'm sure the bowl's empty. Sure. I am exactly. sure it's empty. <laughs> exactly. 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 So, so everyone, if you are now ready to remember your divine presence and step onto your spiritual multidimensional path, but maybe you feel lost, stuck or alone, then please feel free to reach out and connect with me and we can arrange a free 20 minute video clarity call to see where you are now and how you can move forward to take charge of your destiny so that you can spread your wings and soar. And of course, you can receive a free gift to connect with your guides and angels PDF or a future lifetime progression recording, as well as a couple of other free gifts if you sign up to my email list. And again, thank you everyone so much for watching. And I'd like to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are more people who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you. And of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, then please feel free to subscribe and hit that bell button to be notified of when this show goes live or I post new guided meditations. And as always, you know, not just for me, but for all my guests as well, every time you connect with us on any of the social or media platforms, it really helps um, with the algorithms. It gets us noticed. It gets our message out there. So you can be part of that, creating that ripple effect of bringing this understanding, this love, this light, lifting up the world so that we can all move forward as our own beings to create the most perfect life that we can have whilst we're on Earth. And I look forward to you all joining me same time, same place next week. Take care, everyone. Bye.